APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence. Collision Specialists. 631 261 6420. That's 631 261 6420. Auto Excellence. Jimmy, I gotta take a dump. What? No, I mean, I need a dumpster. <sighs> well, for all those needs, you need to call Big V Dumpster Rental, Long Island, New York, 631 900 Dump. Elm Logistics, for all your logistic needs, call 631-299-3595. That's 631-299-3595. Elm Global Logistics, pride, performance, and partnerships. The Monty and the Faro Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. Tired of that same old, same old breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Same old tasting scrambled eggs, burger, that dinner steak, ribs, or pork chops. Why not add a little bit of spice or just a touch of heat to make the difference? Change that scrambled egg with a little bit of Johnny Fabulous's John Cena Sr.'s Million Dollar Jalapeno Hot Sauce. Great on burgers, steaks, chops, and those barbecued ribs. And Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage, ask for Jack. Do you treat your dog as part of the family? <laughs> well, so do we. So why not celebrate your pup's birthday with the ultimate party box? Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Party Pup Info, and let us make your pup's party or any celebration perfection. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. Sport and non-sport cards, wrestling items, autographed items. We buy, sell, and trade. M&J Video Games and Collectibles, located at 1049 Queen Street, Southington, Connecticut, Call us at 1-860-479-9223 or 860-93-GAMES. M&J, video games and collectibles. Vince McMahon, the former owner of WWE, has resigned from TKO Endeavor Sports. You gotta be kidding me. What the f Vince McMahon is accused of sex trafficking in a new lawsuit. Vince McMahon is now under federal investigation. Sports entertainment industry has been rocked by Vince McMahon and the timing could not be any worse. We begin tonight with breaking news. Vinnie Mac is out at WWE. <laughs> Wow, what an intro. <laughs> Welcome back, my friends, to True Crime with the Bad Girl and the Player. My name is Benny Scala, a.k.a. the Player. I'm the co-host of the long-running Dan and Benny of the Ring podcast, as well as a weekly participant on The 30 and Wrestling Remembered shows, all of which can see be seen on the Monty and the Faro YouTube channel. And I'm joined, as always, by my partner in True Crime, the Boston Bad Girl, the siren of situate, legendary professional wrestler, Brittany Brown. Brittany, how you doing? Any good pup stories? Uh, Bree and I had a no DQ match this weekend, which <laughs> I I woefully lost. Oh my goodness, that's terrible! You're not even in the same weight class. It was a squash match. 
<laughs> oh my God. Now I, I, I'm not having a good pet week. I, I have three. I saw cats. your story on Facebook. It was not very good. Yeah. 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 The, the cat was dropped off at seven 30 this morning and I picked her up at four 30 and she had like stroke like symptoms oh, no. and come to find out she's got high blood pressure. I didn't even know that was a cat thing. A cat wow. can have high blood pressure. Come on. My goodness. Yep. So like, I picked her come on. <laughs> like, come, come on. Come on. Come on. I Where is he? Let me see him. I never PBS heard of that before. Through. You know, I, she uh. was 60 points over every time they checked her. Wow. Uh, severely high blood pressure. He's elderly and she's diabetic. So she's now going on human blood pressure medication. My God. You know, Brittany, medicine aside, there are a couple ways to, I think, lower blood pressure, at least with humans. And I don't know if it goes for cats, but chiropractic adjustment, adjusting the atlas, the head and neck, has been known to bring uh, human uh, points down several points, human readings on on the uh, both readings, both the top and bottom. So I don't know if that's something that's there, but you know there are other options too. You know that's certainly one of them. Well, thank you, Doctor Phil. Oh, no. Greatly appreciate <laughs> yes, it. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, it's already becoming a little bit. I was going to say this is going to be a little bit different than most episodes of ours, and they already started that way. But and yeah. normally our subject has been associated with one or several murders. Uh, which in most cases happened many years ago. But uh, this is a scandal that is like, it's unfolding as we speak and there are no dead bodies. And I do need to yeah. preface this, that as of this moment, Vincent Kennedy McMahon has <clears throat> not been char charged with any crimes yet. Uh, we yeah. live in a country where we are innocent until proven guilty. And that applies to a court of law. Now this gathering uh, here is the court of public opinion, which is a little bit different. So we're all going to give our opinions and speculations to how this is all going to go down. And I'm sure we're going to have a follow-up episode in the future to crown the champion prognosticator. And um, our <laughs> guests from last week's Whitey Bulger episode, were just they were just so awesome that we wanted to have them back one more time, uh, especially since this episode is wrestling-related. And first, my fellow contestant from uh, Thursday night on the 30 and co-panelist on Friday night's Wrestling Remembered show, uh, the president of Thursday night, Mr. Senior Guns, the Count of Monte Fisto, Mr. <laughs> Phil Dispensary. I threw the Monte Fisto thing in because it just sounded cool. Phil, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. I, I really enjoyed last week's show. And, you know, as I always say, wrestling fans around the corner and around the world, uh, I'm so happy to be a part of the Crime Time Bunch tonight. So I look forward to this. It's yeah, a great absolutely. topic, and uh, I think we have a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah, we certainly do. And how could I forget my brother from another mother? He's the host of the absolutely wonderful show, What a Day in Centerville, which can be seen at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time every Wednesday night. He's also a fellow contestant on The 30. Actually, he's the reigning and defending champion, and he's also the host of Wrestling Remembered on Friday night. Joe, What a Day, Lowry, how are you? You might think of uh, changing that moniker to uh, What a Schedule. Pretty well, yeah, what, what a schedule is right. Big news tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. You have to tune into that. So uh, I can't let the cat out of the bag just yet, but there's a lot of exciting stuff happening with what a day. Uh, so keep that in mind. But by the way, I just want everybody to know that I'm glad to par be participating tonight, and I am currently not under federal investigation. I just want to let everybody federal. know that so we can go forward. <laughs> Excellent. Nicely done. <laughs> what a day. What a day. Well, guys, why not just let's dive right in. Joe, since you were the one who uh, you sent me the initial legal document, uh, why don't you give our listeners a Reader's Digest version of uh, the impending lawsuit by uh, Janelle Grant? Well, the uh, the lawsuit basically is just it's it's filled with very, very detailed uh, accounts, text messages, uh, emails uh, of a relationship that developed between Janelle Grant, who was an employee with WWE, it actually goes before she was a, an employee with WWE, uh, and included uh, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. In a nutshell, uh, Janelle Grant is basically um, suing Vince McMahon to get out of this non-disclosure agreement that has taken place. Now, in doing so, um, you have to prove there's an agreement in place. You have to prove what's inside the agreement and so forth. Her claim right now, she's not suing criminally. She's suing civilly. Uh, there has been no criminal charges yet against Mr. McMahon. Um, Ninety percent of these cases do settle out of court, but we have to we have to let our viewers know that she is suing to get get out of this non disclosure agreement. 
That's basically what she's doing. She's not suing for money. She's not suing Vince for the trauma and all that stuff that's happened. Now, since then, there's a lot has come out. A lot of stuff has been out, thrown out there. We did an episode uh, with Mike and uh, the 30 and all those crew and everything, on Monty and the Pharaoh. Um, these text messages that are so, so graphic. I can throw some of them up on the screen. I am not going to read them verbatim, um, but you can see that Ooh. these are this is evidence that is now being looked at uh, from what I understand, a grand jury looking to indict Mr. McMahon criminally on this. But this is all part of the civil lawsuit. These are just some excerpts, text messages that include John Laurinaitis, a former WWE corporate employee, Vincent McMahon, Janelle Grant. And of course, there is a um, reference to a former UFC champion slash WWE superstar who needs to be resigned. There's some sex trafficking allegations where Vince wanted uh, Janelle to sleep with this UFC star. Uh, the Wall Street Journal publicly came out and named that person uh, Brock Lesnar. But I, I, you know, we have to be careful here. He's not named in this civil uh, lawsuit, only the reference to a UFC champion slash WWE superstar. Uh, we have to keep that in mind now, folks. Now, there's a lot of angles we can come at this uh, tonight. We're going to get uh, a lot of, I'm sure a lot of uh, people are going to be in the, the uh, chat room. I can see a lot of people chiming in now. This is a very, oh, yeah. a very hot topic. I can see the viewership growing as we, as we can, as we're watching this. Uh, this is a hot topic, not only because it's WWE. I also think the timing is horrible. This happened right before the Royal Rumble. It's, it, we're 61 days out away from the WWE slash Endeavor TKO. Biggest event of the year, WrestleMania. We call this WrestleMania season. For those not familiar with WWE circles, this is their biggest time. TV media rights deal were just announced. You talk about a roller coaster ride. We went through this two weeks ago. Monday was the Netflix deal for Raw. The next thing it was TKO and The Rock joining the board. The Rock joining TKO Endeavor's board. And then two days later, boom, this, this lawsuit uh, drops. And it just took over the internet. Um, so we have to be careful. We're not assuming Vince McMahon is guilty. He, he, uh, the court of public no. opinion, unfortunately, does things backwards. We, you are guilty, then proven innocent or vice versa. But... We know the court of a public opinion can be very, very uh, scary. So we want to reiterate, though, we have to be careful that Ms. McMahon has not been found guilty of anything. But what's going to come out in, in these conversations in this lawsuit is that there was a very, very, I'm just going to say it, a very sick culture within WWE corporate and, and Ms. McMahon. And I think I saw a great line the other day. It was like, what was he? I thought somebody who wasn't even involved with wrestling says, Ms. McMahon, I thought he ran a wrestling company, not a brothel. And, right. and that struck that struck me because that's the casual person looking at it like this. We're wrestling fans. We've been on the inside. We cover this day to day. This is a huge bombshell, nonetheless. This is huge. Absolutely. Now I'm going to start with with Brittany, and I'm I'm going to pass this question around the horn. But I think this question is is central to all of this because you know this question determines you know is it just consenting adults you know engaging in very depraved behavior or is it a criminal activity? So. Brittany, uh, and I'm not saying, you know, the average woman, but is it conceivable that this woman, you know, Joe mentioned that she's not looking for money. She, she not at all. She never mentioned any any comp compensatory damages. Um, it seems like the court of public opinion has already convicted this woman. You know, I've, I've even heard her called on this channel a whore. Um, is it possible that, now this woman uh, and I'm going to backtrack a little bit and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. And anybody in the room is welcome to comment as well. But. She was caring for aging parents who passed away. Yep. Uh, her and, and she was uh, encountering a lot of financial issues. Her apartment, condo manager, referred her to Vince McMahon, and um, and then you know they met and he offered her a job. And of course, you know now we're here. But is it possible if this woman, who was definitely very vulnerable, younger, um, in financial straits, could have? And I'm not saying did, but could have fallen a victim to him in terms of, you know, being a, in an abusive relationship. Is that, is it at least possible? I think so. I think anybody can be in an abusive relationship, a female or a male, young or old. I mean, it's definitely possible, but there's, there's nothing that anybody could give me to this, give me $10 million offer to sleep with Vince McMahon. The answer would be no. 
give me, right. you know, a half a million dollars of Macy's cards or whatever. <laughs> Lord and Taylor, all this crap he supposedly gave her to sleep with his friends and all this. I wouldn't do it, but would somebody else? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I bet somebody it would do like it for, somebody for a, for a did. Quiznos And I think from, there's you know? way more than her that did. And yeah, <laughs> uh, you never know. You know, you never know. Somebody might do it for a thousand dollars, depending on how destitute they were. But I can right. tell you, I would live in my car before I would handshake, with right? somebody for money. So, you know, yeah, everybody's different. But um, yeah. you know, I just I find it hard to believe that somebody could be that controlled. Um, that they would just give up their body to anyone and let them do anything to them that is so degrading based on those texts and well, other according to the lawsuit, we... according to the lawsuit, there are some allegations in the lawsuit that some of this went against her will. Uh, most notably, yes, a, a, um... a, a, a sexual assault between Vince, John Laurinaitis, and her inside Vince's office or John's office or somebody's yeah. office in WWE. Uh, that right there constitutes a crime. If that's if that is seriously alleged, we're crossing over into criminal yep. criminal uh, liability here. So, but I mean, Absolutely. and we were talking before the show is, is we were talking about cults and like something like Scientology, where very very intelligent people pretty much sign their whole lives away for years and years. So, what why is it that much of a stretch that this woman fell into the influence of a very very powerful man? You know, and uh, you know, just followed his will. Doctor yeah, Phil, I why don't you chime happen. in? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> isn't it ultimately making a deal with the devil? You know, isn't Vince kind of known already as as the devil in many ways? You know, you mean Mister McMahon? Mister McMahon, <laughs> yeah, he's told us he's the devil. He told us he's God, and yeah. you know, I, I believe he might be one or both of them somehow, you know, this is a guy we grew up with, first of all, and who's, you know, over 40 years, at least in my case, we've invited into our homes, you know, and we've, he's been a, a guest in our homes for several hours a week, again, going for decades now. So we bring, I think, an interesting perspective and, and it kind of hits us a little more too, you know, and we've seen the whole evolution of Vince McMahon, not only as a character, but in his own world from announcer and even Benny, you go back further when Vince replaced uh, Ray Morgan, right? Oh, yeah. And uh, just that yeah. evolution. And, you know, as he gained control and as he took this company into what it has become today. Uh, so, you know, you're going to get a lot of people, I think, uh, feeling for Vince in many ways and maybe defending him, maybe defending him a little little more than they should. Um, we have consenting adults here. And, yes, we also have a potentially a grooming situation, a person who capitalized on a tragic situation and uh to basically to satisfy his own ends and uh but we had also the the victim here and we'll call her victim for just for for this uh moment um she went along for the program and could this have been the case where this was just a, a business deal gone awry that's certainly possible too mm -hmm. you know um yeah. so it, it's really layered it's nuanced uh you know um I don't know that we're going to have the perspective to really make a judgment now. And, but in the end, as Lenny Bruce said, uh, what was his famous quote? Um, in the halls of justice, all the justice is done in the hall. So yeah. I think this is going to be something ultimately settled out of the courtroom. You know, yeah. we recently had a, a, another very high profile case involving a billionaire and without getting into names and any of that, um, who was quite chummy with Vince in his own right who um, was uh, now found to owe tens of millions of dollars for this case that happened a long time ago. And the, uh, the accuser couldn't remember the year it took place, couldn't remember the day, the month, or any situation like that. And, um, you know, the case on its merits from the little that, you know, we know uh, seems to stink, but in a, but in the end, the uh, the defendant is slated to spend or, or, or to owe, you know, tens of billions of dollars in right. compensation, not even just for the crime, but for accusing the defendant of um, of making it up in essence. So, 
I, I just shudder to think what could happen here. You know, I mean, we want justice to be served. We, we do. We want, you know, if there is a victim in this case, we want to make sure that justice is served. But, you know, as right. Gorilla Monsoon would say, we don't want a miscarriage of justice either. You know, right. A lot, of, it, it, a lot of comments in the chat room and, yeah. and Foxhole Willie saying she was free to walk away. But I mean, how many women stay in abusive relationships? You know, how many battered women are there? I mean, you you know, they, they, you could say the same thing with them. You know, you, you could you know go to the police. You could walk away, but they come back to their husbands or boyfriends or whatever. They, yeah. it, it's a it's a it's a syndrome. It's not just you know, we're not dealing with somebody in their right, their total right mind. They are under the influence right. of this person to the point where they do give a, up a lot of control, I think. And again, that's my opinion, but I, I don't think, uh, you know, I don't think we should be very quick. And it's all going to come out, I'm sure, eventually. But in well, my yeah. opinion, this woman very well could have been a victim. Let's not forget, too, we're the last to see what comes out. By the time it makes the press, we're getting right. either the watered down version or whatever is going on. The only access we have to right now is the lawsuit. And, the, and that's filed in court. That's a public right. document. You can find it online. I have copies. I send a copy to the guys. The, the lawsuit is pretty straightforward. It gives times. It gives dates. It gives instances. Now, the thing that I kind of find crazy, you know, is that Vince McMahon's been under investigation since July. Actually, July of 2022, he was investigated. And the reason they investigated him back then was because when this TKO Endeavor deal was starting to go down, they, they were missing $17 million. And that's when it came out that he had some other NDAs. He Ooh. paid some hush to other women. We don't know who they are. From what I've heard now from the lawyers, their their emails, their inboxes are inundated with emails from these women who do want to come forward and let them know what's been going on. So there is a pattern here. There's no doubt about it. Now, the WWE stance corporate wise is that the feds are now mm. back involved in Vince's life because they seized his cell phone, yeah. documents, all that stuff. He had a subpoena sent, sent to him and so forth. They just think it's a continuation of that investigation. No one saw this bombshell from two weeks ago with Janelle Grant. And let me just put up a comment that she had uh, came out with the New York Post uh, on behalf of her lawyers. Uh, Janelle Grant, the lawyers, said that Janelle hopes any doors of secrecy have been blown off their hinges and that fresh air fills the headquarters. She hopes that those at the company, past and present, who fear speaking out about harm is a thing of the past, and she wishes everyone peace. You know, she they they had to come up with that statement because there are people, um, I just got wind, I think, um, 20 minutes ago, someone said Ava Rain, the Rock's daughter, is now getting uh, death threats. That's so ridiculous. That's crazy. Gonna run. So they have to control what's being released to the media slash us. We see the end game. We only see what's happening now, what they want to release to us. If they're just touching the surface, which the lawyer says, this could mm -hmm. be um, historic proportions. I mean, not well, to say yeah. that the allegations in this lawsuit are not historic enough, but this might go even further. It's going to get really, really hairy. And it's like I said, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So, and what about the fact now that John Arnitis? Remember, uh, Phil? Do you remember the Bowery Boys? Yeah. Slip Mahoney, <laughs> the William has toyed. So all of a sudden, now John, John Laurinaitis is now a victim too. But you know, the interesting thing, and he spoke to his lawyer. He didn't deny anything. He, no. he didn't say you know none, none of her allegations. All he said was that he was a victim as well. But to me, I'm that I infer that this would. Number one, that means that he's saying that she's a victim. Yeah. And number two, he's corroborating that all this stuff happened. That's the way I take it anyway. Yeah, not, well, a, yeah. not a great defense on John's behalf. I mean, you can just outright deny it. But to say that he's a victim and he's not, he's not denying that the events took place, if, if he's, he just self-incriminated himself because in that lawsuit states that John Laurinaitis and Vince McMahon sexually assaulted this woman in an office, he just outed himself. So. Yeah. Whether or not he's in handcuffs right now, I don't know. But that this is a fine line here. But and this is all maybe his a civil a civil lawsuit. There's no criminal charges have not been filed yet. There's a there is a strong possibility, though, with this investigation, with the feds now involved, if they uncover an inkling of anything illegal, whether it's sex trafficking, sexual assault, she said no, he said yes, no means yes, that type of thing. It this is gonna get really, really bad. Really? Well, then it all boils down to my question then, you know, is she a victim or is she a participant? 
And I mean, other, otherwise, in one instance, you ha- you just have you know you have sexual depravity, and the other side, you have a crime. Right. I think Laurinaitis has he knows maybe he knows more than we know as far as what's <laughs> coming down, and he's thinking, man, I better hitch my wagon to this to this girl as opposed to Camp McMahon because I don't think it's looking very good for Vince. Yeah, you know, and how many a- other superstars are involved that haven't been named yet? They will be soon. You'll well, see. that's yeah. the other thing I was going to say, though, is uh, TKO Joe Perez, sure is that. That these NDAs apparently were not done with the knowledge and consent of the WWE. He kind of just did these on his own, correct? Right. And if you look at the uh, the NDA that's on file with the civil lawsuit, I know we talk about this backstage before we come on. Vince McMahon didn't sign her NDA. This thing, that whole thing could be null and void, and she can just go public and tell everybody her story and all that. She's just trying to do it the right way. Lawyers are now advising her that this does not look to appear to be a valid non-disclosure agreement. Because a valid non-disclosure me- agreement is one lawyer, one lawyer, parties in the middle, everyone gets copies. And so far, the copies that have been presented in the lawsuit by Janelle Grant and her lawyers, none of them are signed by Vincent McMahon. So wow. we're looking at so a whole I mean, they're, they're, on that aspect. Are they even enforceable? I mean, are any of them enforceable? They're gonna, they're gonna have to go to court and figure that out. Yeah. Is, I think is this gonna good. be the next Bill Cosby? I mean, that, that's that yeah. was my thought. Yeah. Yeah. Boy oh boy, huh? Or another Michael fallen Jackson, icon. Like all the victims start coming forward. It's yeah. a Harvey Weinstein effect. It's gonna be the Harvey well, Weinstein effect, you'll see. I mean this all started back in the 80s with Rita Chatterton. Isn't that yeah. the first one that became public? Yep. And they, they claimed that she was trying to do a money grab. That's what they claim on that. So this could be a lifelong thing with Vince McMahon. We're just finding out about stuff now. Well, this is the scary part. We're only getting what they're allowing us to see. Right. Once this thing hits the courtroom, which they don't think it will, it'll be settled out of court. We don't know if we'll ever get the real truth or the real situations, but what's been presented to us right now in the court is damaging enough to take anybody down. I don't know how this is going to go any other way. Well, well, let's go back a little bit, though. Let's talk about, I mean, we got the Jimmy Snook incident where, you know, I uh, allegedly Vince McMahon went to the police station with a briefcase of money. <laughs> yeah, He's right. kind of you know, on the hush-hush. You got, you got the whole thing with Mel Phillips with the young boys. You, know? yeah. you, got, you got Rita Chatterton. You got the steroid... Uh, scandal and you got the death of Owen Hart. I mean, you have all this other stuff. This isn't like it's not like the guy was a choir boy and this all ca- happened out of nowhere. You have a you have a long body of work of, of you know yeah. shitty behavior and a, you know too and and to, and, to, and to talk about that too in the business front, uh, buying Stu's territory, buying the buying Stampede and not paying Stu for that, mm-hmm. then going out west to L.A. to Mike LaBelle, buying that territory and the rights and stiffing him on on the deal too. So there right. certainly seems to be a history of welching on deals. And I think in this case, particularly with, um, with Miss Grant, I think that the, that was the, the, the final welch that kind of uh, caught up to him. So, you know, there's a history there of that too. And ultimately that's going to bite you. Yeah, no, that is true. That is true. Um, from what I've been seeing about the latest wall street journals, um, report today that came out that federal agents have confirmed that they are in contact with other women and that's plural. They didn't, they didn't say how many, but they did say women plural. So there are more out there who are coming forward. Now, whether or not they approve for NDAs or stuff like that remains to be seen. But like I said, the court of public opinion, if he hasn't taken a beating now, what's going to happen when all else break loose, when everything, you know, I don't know. It's just going to be not good. You know, is it a case of art imitating life or life imitating art? Because, you <laughs> right. know, we've we've seen this history of, yeah. of these, the, the storylines that we've seen, you know, probably don't even probe the depths of the storylines that we haven't seen and that, that have been kind of squashed along the way. And we've heard whisperings and talk of them and even directly from some of the people t- uh, to whom these were proposed, you know. This whole idea of Stephanie pregnant and perhaps it being Vince's baby, and then no, 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 then maybe making it Shane. So that undertone, that I mean, you know, highly disturbing stuff. You know, we 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 harken back to Katie Vick too. You know, I that was old, just thinking that. Old, yeah, and you know, and and these things just uh, very yeah. disturbing. I mean, you know, we as as wrestling fans too, we appreciate the edgy product and that sort of thing, but 
you know, watching some of this, I've been like, really, you know, yeah. where, where's this coming from? You know, it's oh, like, no. yeah, I just can't get into this part of it, you know? And yeah, uh, right. so it, it's funny how, uh, and again, it, it's a two way street, you know, again, whether, you know, people who are, for, who are pushing these charges, uh, it's very easy to paint Vince as a deviant given his, his darkly creative product, you know, but uh, by the same token, it's hard for us not to believe that there's a huge element of darkness there. Well, I heard Vince Russo say something before that he and Vince were alone one time and McMahon turns to Russo and says, if you really knew who I am, you'd turn around and run like hell, you know? And, uh, and that actually harkens back to that song that he did. Remember his Tom Jones imitation on, on one of yes. the uh, wrestling Stand albums? Back. Stand, Stand right. back, yeah. Well, you know, he, he kind of told us that, didn't Prophetic. he? My my yeah. first t- my first taste with that. I interviewed uh, Francine, the Queen of ECW, a few years back, and during the course of the interview, we were just talking about how ECW was bought up by Vince and all that stuff. And she was sitting backstage for like six months, and she commented about how the fact that she was trying to get into storylines and so forth. And uh, someone said, "Well, you know, if you really want to get his attention." You might want to lower your decolletage, oil your uh, breasts up, and maybe go talk to him. And she goes, I'm not doing that. Now that I look back on that conversation, there is a WWE official telling her how to get Vince's attention. So the culture is already there. Um, As innocent as that may sound or not innocent, um, I was taken back by the comment. We didn't discuss it any further. I did have some off... um, the record comments from another WWE superstar, uh, Maria Kanellis, um, that culture was alive and well when she was there. So, you know, she's not saying she was a victim or anything like that. Don't, it's nothing like that, but we did have a conversation off the record that that culture is there. Um, so it's been there and this is only going back a few years. So you're talking people read what Rita Charon, we're going back to the eighties and things like that. There's a lot of this element in this company Evidently, it's been a very dysfunctional company, just like the McMahon family is dysfunctional as they portrayed themselves on TV. Words coming out now that there was a huge falling out over this with him and Shane. Yeah, uh, these, these these were supposed to be the heir parents to Vince McMahon. Stephanie came into back to the WWE after stepping down to replace her father, who was under investigation. Then when he came back, she left and she didn't want to come back because she knew what the investigation, she found out what the investigation was about. So they've had an idea of what was coming down the pike for a while now. We're just seeing the end result of it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is, this is, you know, what's that old thing? You're, you're sick as your secrets. Vince right. McMahon seems to be very, very sick. And now his well, secrets are coming out and we're going to get a firsthand look at what, he, what his secrets have been. I got to throw something out there. Now I had three sons, three adult sons. I don't know about any, you know, any of you uh, having a daughter. Do- I don't have, a, I don't have a daughter, but anybody, to, and this is just personal to me, but Absolutely. you know, a- anybody who is defending Vince that has a daughter. Now I can tell you that if I had a daughter and Vince McMahon shit on my daughter's head, um, <laughs> Vince McMahon wouldn't be going to trial. I would I be think- going to trial for the murder of Vince McMahon. Yeah, so I, think- just, I mean. How would you feel like everybody can make judgments? Oh, she's just a whore. She she's looking for a payday. If it was your daughter or your sister, how would you feel if that happened to her? I'm with that's you, man. A, I'm, yeah, I'm with you too. To totally, about. and I do. And and I and I had the very same thought. Anyone who has a daughter has those same thoughts immediately, and and certainly certainly right. felt the very same way. You know, it's curious too. There's only one picture of Miss Grant out there that I've seen. I don't know if you guys have seen more than one picture. No, the same one. No. Yeah. But there's only one, seemingly one picture. I don't know if others have been scrubbed from the internet or what. But also mm-hmm. of interest, I look at her and I can see, and I'm not saying this is the case, but there's a little resemblance. She could be a McMahon in some ways, you know, <laughs> I think, with the eyes and the hair and just everything. Again, I, only, maybe I, I'm only put, I only I only put this comment up just to show the picture. That's the only picture of her on the internet right now. No, no, I agree, and that that and, seems to be the case. Yeah, that's the only picture, which is curious too. But um, you know, yeah, I, and I she's old yeah. enough to be his daughter, really. You know, oh, definitely, it's, there's there's no doubt about it. Now let's get back to what the what the lawsuits alleging. The reason that the, we're hearing about these sexual innuendos and this crazy appetite for lust that Vince McMahon has. 
is because she has to prove through her lawyers and through this lawsuit how Vince breached the non-disclosure agreement. And it was text messages, videos, um, you know, really candid conversations. There's one text message. It's embedded in here somewhere. I'll let the readers go ahead and look at it. One of the big long ones on the upper left corner. Talk about how he just showed videos and pictures of her engaging in sexual activity with him to 12 people backstage at a WWE um, either event or meeting or whatever. So there are 12 people now that have witnessed this. She's only trying to prove that the NDA was breached in this manner. It doesn't matter what was what's inside the text messages and the graphics is harmful enough, but for her to have to come out like this and be shown in a light like this, just to prove that this man violated the non-disclosure agreement speaks volumes. I mean, she's, she's trying to just prove one thing and that's it. She's not trying to go after money. She's not trying to, you know, she might've been a willing participant, all that stuff. But like I said before, in my comments, there are sections of this lawsuit that says she said no. And he said, no means yes. And do, do that's we know thing, anything that's, about this young lady, here. though, before her, you know, involvement with, with Vincent McMahon? Do we say like, his, like history do, as do far as... Do we know as... anything about her as far as, you know, pre-Vince McMahon? I know she, she was caring for aging parents. Brittany, do you know, have you heard anything as far as what she did before that? No, I did not. And, and and I heard the same as all of you heard about her apartment managers, the one that hooked her. My guess is she wasn't paying the rent. So the apartment manager hooked her up with Vince McMahon as a way to get her rent paid. And he knew exactly what he was doing. Right. I mean, th there's a lot of stuff we don't know about that context. I question right. everything. Okay. If she's on the vo on the verge of bankruptcy, let's 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 analyze this aspect. She's li living in a condo complex where Vince lives in the penthouse. Vince is a billionaire. Vince is playing for a high priced penthouse wherever it is, and she's living in that same building, which means she has to have some money from somewhere. And she's on the verge of bankruptcy. And you know, instead of this, you know, instead of you know, like most people, you look for a new place to live that you can afford. Never mind just staying in that place and trying to find a job and all that. Something didn't jive with me in that part of the lawsuit. Like to me, it's like, okay, this uh, condo manager turned around to Vince McMahon who just happened to live in the penthouse above her. Like, okay, but she was already in the building. Okay. So she did come from some type of money, whether she had money invested or whatever. I don't know. I don't know her background on that. That was the first thing that kind of caught me off guard a little bit. Yeah. But as it went on, well, Joe to quilt, uh, to to quote the great Bill Clinton, you just you just read my mind because I thought the exact same thing. Uh, yeah. It's like, what is this woman doing living? How could you know? I, I heard you know struggling financially. I heard bankruptcy. Yeah. You know all that stuff. Financial. She's distress. emotionally unstable. She just lost her parents. But she, but you know, she's living in the same condo complex with Vince McMahon. You know that that condo isn't cheap. That's what so I'm that, saying. That's that was the I'm one saying. thing that kind of like you know, and I'm I'm a numbers guy. I've done finance my whole life. It's like. Well, how could you afford to live there unless she wasn't paying the rent? Right. Yeah. That, that, Maybe that, her that, parents that, were paying it. That, that's what I think, Brittany. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I think it was her parents' place and they yeah. were paying it. And when they passed away, that was, you know, she stayed there, but she had no you know, means. An to an for another it. thing that caught me off guard a little bit was um, the whole relationship between her and Vince did start out as friends. And then it got kind of weird where he would answer the door in a, in a towel yeah. or, you know, tell her that he was getting her a job at the WWE. You know, all the way up until that point, everything was, oh, will you have sex with me? Or will you date me? Or will you whatever? And she was like, no. And then he would just transfer it over to like, well, I'm still working on that job for you, blah, blah, blah. All Ew. for a $75,000 a year by the job, by the way. Ew. So anyways, they almost consummate their relationship, according to the lawsuit. From there, she goes to interview a WWE corporate, sits down in a conference room with two or three individuals who are just strictly on their computers. And this is supposed to be an interview. Now, if you ever had an interview with three people, you're asked general questions. Who are you? How are, are you? you? You know, business back line. Yeah. According to this lawsuit and according to her testimony and statements, she, there was no conversation between the three people in there other than amongst themselves saying, OK, where are we going to put her in this company? Where can we put her? That's not a job interview. Right. That's no, not a like deal. Vince, you know. Vince said, find a place for her and that's it. Right. And I thought that was weird. Again, you're going on this interview. You, you're assuming this relationship with the guy who's going to get you a job 
for 75 grand a year, which by the way, she ended up making more because she kept getting raises, which is mm -hmm. probably another symbolic gesture of hush money. Um, but 75 grand a year and with, and just to go through that for the first year or so of just getting to, to become an employee of WWE just was dumbfounding to me. Yeah. I was like, you know, you go on this job interview and she's all dressed up, ready to answer questions. And they didn't, they didn't ask her one question. They mm -hmm. talked amongst herself. It lasted 20 minutes. She actually texted Vince while she was in the office. This is in the actual lawsuit saying, I don't know what they're doing, but they're not talking to me. And Vince finally texted the people that were on the, on, in the office and said, somebody say something to her to that effect. Let her know where she's going to be going. How would he say it in Vince's words? Say something. God yeah. damn it. It's like, <laughs> instead of your fight, you're hired. You know, I don't know. It's right. Just, it's, <laughs> there are, so the lawsuit gets very, very detailed in these instances. Yeah. So if you get a chance, I would highly read it's it makes for a very entertaining. It, reading, I read, but, read, but a Joe's, lot of information we yep. don't need to know about. Joe yeah. sent it to me and I, I spent a Saturday morning reading it. It was, I mean, I thought, you know what? I'm, I maybe I'll read three, three pages of it. I thought after the first three pages, you know what? I'm going to read another couple of minutes. I went up sitting, sitting down and reading the whole thing. Very, very interesting stuff. Yeah. I, I just, it, I just find it very, there is some, you know, we're finding out all the detail. We're only finding out about the details of this relationship because she's trying to prove something. So I, I forget that analogy that you used that you have to prove this in order to get that. And that's what she's doing. She had to prove that the NDA was breached. How did you do that? Well, I had a relationship with him. We had crazy, crazy sex when I had threesomes and I had slept with everybody. You drop a UFC champion, you know, whoever that might be, which the Wall Street Journal is now is saying is Brock Lesnar. I feel... I, you know, I, I feel bad for everybody involved because this is not a good situation because Brock Lesnar's married. He's got kids in college now. He's trying to live out his life. It, it's just really, really sick and twisted. To go back to John Laurinaitis, um, he's married to Nikki and Breed Bella's um, mother. Yeah. And there is some detailed conversation between Vince and him and John about John's wife was about to find out he had to get a new phone and she was worried. Oh my God, where's the phone? Did it get erased? Did the messages get deleted? Did the So there's already that anxiety uh, with her in regards to just one aspect of that. And that's what John Laurinaitis, these are high profile people. And now do, do the math, look at the timing, but all when John Laurinaitis was let go, it was directly resulted in the inv investigation that was underway against Vince McMahon. So it, and that's probably why he did come out and didn't yeah. deny it, but it essentially threw Vince under the bus and calling himself a victim. So, you know, there's a lot to be played out here. It's going to get scary. It's going to get really right. scary. I, I can't believe that poor woman with that first horrible marriage that she had and she raised those three kids alone. And then yeah. to think she found the love of her life. And this is what this guy's doing to her behind her back? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's, it's as you know, it's like that family. You don't hear your the family's dirty laundry. Well, we're gonna get everybody's dirty laundry, but by, by the time this is all said and done, yeah. because what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna know more about Brock Lesnar. If in fact it's Brock Lesnar, we're gonna know more about Johnny Little Johnny Ace, as we all like to call him. Yeah. Obviously, we know about Vince McMahon, but like I said, who are the additional women? Who are the oh, people yeah. in WWE that know that knew? You know, there was a um, a comment some somebody would I might have been in the chat that you can work for a company and know how bad it is, but you just you go there, you're a paycheck person, you go there, you do your job, and you leave, even though you know what goes on behind closed doors. I think that's going to be what the culture is at WWE. People knew what was going on, just yeah. nobody had the guts to do anything about it because the controlling aspect is that's my that's my money, that's that's how I make a living, that's how I pay my bills, that's how I afford myself. It can get really, really crazy. They, they were all in fear of their own jobs. I mean, yeah. who's going to speak yeah. up? Because, yeah. you know, yeah. they, they got their own families to support. And then what's Vince McMahon going to do? Say, oh, I understand you. You took the high road. It's no, he's going to kick them out. Yeah. Yeah. And the chat is very active. There's no, there's no kudos to everybody out no, there. Chad, you chat. know, most of, most of the chat is very judgmental against Janelle Grant. I guess the truth is going to come out. And maybe, you know, maybe I'm, going to take a lot of shit for being you know pro, pro janelle grant but i i just i have you heard of the stockholm syndrome yeah. absolutely yeah. patty hearst yeah yeah yeah, look at, yeah i mean that woman patty hearst geez they grew up 
a, a within a billionaire's family. Yeah. Next thing you know, she's you know, she has a Glock in, at, at a bank. Yeah. Yeah. Changed her name to what? Tanya. Well, yeah. That, 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 one Seinfeld of the, reference. <laughs> what, they're, what they're actually trying, the lawyers now want people want to get uh, familiar with the term trauma bond. This is a true thing. Um, mental yeah, it's from issues. narcissistic personality it's disorder exactly. and the relationships when narcissists yep. um, do that. Yeah, they they create the trauma bond with with their victim. Right. Absolutely, so this, this and I see a- all the telltale signs of that of that whole narcissistic abuse pattern here and in his personality. And how could it not develop given the again the the torture that he went through as a kid? You know. Yeah. I mean, you talk about having an you know an edible complex, and you talk about the torture he received not only from the stepfathers but the mother too, and just that depravity that yeah. he he more than alluded to back. I think two thousand one, there was a great article, uh, great interview he had, and uh, he started to open up a little bit about that. So how right. can that not damage him too? You know, when his yeah, dad came in, Vince McMahon did not have the best life growing up. Whatsoever. He did not. I mean, Again, not as an excuse, but as just a way to understand. No, but I- you know? I think a part of this was to like whatever his father accomplished, he was going to absolutely blow him out of the water yeah. just to show him, you know, that, you, shouldn't, the, you shouldn't have left me with my, my mother and my stepfather. Now, on the professional side of things, when it uh, involves TKO or Endeavor, uh, a term that is being thrown around there is called vicarious liability. Mm-hmm. Now, even if TKO was the owner at the time of the conduct, generally vi- vicarious liability, meaning one party being liable for the conduct of another does it pass with what they call intentional conduct? Now, if this was intentional conduct, it all depends on the nuances and the relationship between TKO and the prior owners. If this is ever proved, this could actually throw out any merger that WWE and TKO and Endeavor had. It's yep. a long shot because it, it would take probably a long time to prove. But I think um, that TKO just pretty much summed it up that, you know, Vince no longer works here. He's not part of anything. He does have stock options now, but he has no controlling stock options. And Mm -hmm. my guess would be if they really want to cut ties with anything to do with him, they would just buy him out and get him off any entity of TKO Endeavor, WWE, um, which could be coming down the pike. That could, that could happen in the next hour for all we know. I bet. I bet. They do need to cut their ties I mean, I know Ari Emanuel has been saying he was never a big fan of Vince. Maybe he now knows why. <laughs> um, whether this merger was even on the chopping block at one point, because we're going back a couple of years now that Vince has been uh, being investigated. So if this, you know, the seventeen million dollar and hush money all came out due to that investigation, that almost jeopardized the whole merger with TKO. Right. Never Vince actually had to pay that back to the board. Yep, he had no problem doing. We just didn't know what he was really paying the money out for now now we're getting a real good idea of what it was well here yeah. here's an interesting question though you know how how far does the wwe go as far as eliminating vince mcmahon from their history like they did with a benoit they got to do that benoit I mean, that, that's like taking my out of the cell though is they it? really how can't do that? he's they he's, can't they can't, can't be denied he just an cannot be denied for, for an immediate they can they could just wipe the halls of history from him for now. And then as time goes on and all that stuff, I'm not saying, you know, reinstate him or whatever and things like that. You know, you got Benoit who's, you know, is a tragic situation who still to this day, there are wrestling fans out there that said he was a phenomenal wrestler. You should be in the hall of fame. Right. You know, yeah, but and homicide and infanticide, yeah. man, you they know, still, just, yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy Superfly Snooker is another example. They have banished him from WWE hall of fame. He's his stuff's not back up. Um, it's a shame, but we don't know what we don't know. Um, you know, he was about to right. stand trial, then he was found at fit to stand trial. So, I mean, then he passed away. So yeah. we don't know. And, and, you know, and again, going back to Vince and, and, and I, you know, he is 78. He, uh, there, there was just so many factors that could contribute to, yeah. uh, his unwellness, you know, and, and not to make right. a, a long distance, uh, diagnosis, but it's not out of the realm of probability that there's some dementia there, you know? There in could some be. form, absolutely, you know, yeah, and they're Mr. McMahon. He took a lot of chair shots, and and and, and the past traumas, and just the yep. lifestyle, and just so much, you know. Yep. So I remember I think uh, that's, I mean, that's a factor. I want to say it was a couple of years ago when Vince came back. He he did a rare public appearance on Raw, and Kevin Owens headbutted Vince. I and, remember, yeah. And Vince told Kevin to really headbutt him. Yeah, of course he, he did. 
and Vince got cut right open on 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 TV. The hard way, and, yeah. And I'm saying, this guy's like seventy something years old, and he's getting headbutted like that, telling his talent to do that. Yeah, not normal by any means, any stretch of the imagination. Not when you, you don't need that the trauma involved with that. But like you said, Phil, you bring up a good point. His past, his history, his his um growing up lifestyle and all that stuff. There, I think there was some sexual abuse. Um, growing oh, up, I, I don't think by that. his father, but by a family member or something like that. But, um, you know, that could carry on to adulthood. We know all of that. But trauma bond is a big thing that you're going to hear about with this lawsuit. If it goes any further, like I said, 90 percent of the time it is uh, settled out of court. She only wants the NDA to prove that the NDA was breached. She doesn't want money from all this. She made it abundantly clear. But we have to look at the other side of it, too. If the NDA was breached and it, she's free to tell her story, there's probably just as much money uh, for her out there than oh, easily, easily yeah. what Vince would have paid her. So, yep. Book really, deals, the, 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 the biggest risk right now is from the federal government, though. I mean, once they, you know, if they indict him, the, 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 this story takes a whole different turn. Yeah. Well, if you're looking at the civil, I mean, I, I asked people in the chat, I see them, they're, they're having a lively discussion and it's awesome. Thank you very much for, for joining us. Oh yeah, absolutely. You really need to read the lawsuit and what it entails. I mean, she's not a money grubber. She's, I mean, at least she's not portrayed like that. She's not going after Vince's money. She's merely just pointing out the fact that her, the NDA was breached. She's already conceding the fact that she was in a relationship with Vince and several other people in WWE She's identifying the kind of culture that was in WWE where it was okay to be sexually assaulted and so forth. There are instances, I know I sound like a tape recorder, in the lawsuit that she does claim that she said no. And the Brock Lesnar slash UFC champion, this whole thing was stemming that Vince set them up on a date to uh, so Brock could sleep with her or this UFC champion because his contract was up. And if he slept together, he right. would re-sign the contract. Well, turns out if you read all the way through, the um, the rendezvous never really happened because after they got through with dinner, Brock was so shit faced, he went back to the hotel and passed out. He <laughs> didn't even walk back to the room or anything. So, you know, but there are text messages uh, out there. Brock's name or the UFC champion's name has been um, blacked out. So, you know, edited edit it out. So, you know, Wall Street Journal so far is the only only public media outlet that has named Brock Lesnar and all this, even though he's not named in the lawsuit, just a UFC champion, someone that they're trying to resign highly successful WWE superstar doesn't take the genius to figure that out because it yeah. sure as hell wasn't Bobby Lashley. So, no. I mean, so you got to think about it. Matt like, Riddle. <laughs> yeah, Matt Riddle. <laughs> it's kind of you know, weird. That, yeah. I feel bad for everybody, everybody involved that is not guilty of anything. And yeah. I can only imagine the number of people's names that are going to get brought up. I mean, now there's three. Yeah. There's going to be probably 40 before this is over with, if not more. Well, you know, my thing here is, okay, we have to look at, they just had a massive layoff too when TKO took over mm -hmm. on the corporate side. Like uh, we're talking like 50, 60 people lost their jobs, which is right. what happens when companies merge. They were higher ups, corporate people. Um, did they know? So, you know, they're going to be sought after. Uh, yep. Kevin Dunn, a longtime WWE confidant with Vince McMahon, he resigns. You, you start to see this domino effect happen. And there's always going to be that question mark over their head now. Did you know? Right. Did you know? And all it takes is just one of them to say, yeah, I did know. You know, it's a domino effect. Once they all go. They're, they're, it's all she's going to keep going and it's going to be sad. I mean, it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's the only way to look at it. But again, to clarify, she's not suing Vince for money. She's suing to get out of the NDA. And the only way she could do that is to prove that he breached it. She's got the proof supposedly. Um, but it's pretty hard to deny the facts that are in that lawsuit. And I really strongly suggest everybody in the chat, if you can just, just read the lawsuit. It's about 50 pages. Very entertaining. And it's not boring reading either, folks. No, it's not at all. Time stamped, text messages, uh, comments. It's it, it tells you what they're looking for. And it says in the bottom what they're after is just to get her out of the NDA. And, of course, I know I mentioned this earlier. Um, there are lawyers now looking at this NDA going. It's not even signed by Vince McMahon. Yeah. It was actually drawn up by Vince McMahon's personal Tory McDevitt, I think is his last name. 
Sherry uh, McDevitt. Sherry McDevitt drew yep. it up. Long no other lawyer. lawyers were present. And this is, I think this is the same for the other women too, the other five uh, women uh, that he paid the hush money to. The, it was only the lawyer, Vince, and the women. The, the women had no legal representation. And anybody in the legal community can tell you that a non disclosure agreement is two parties right. represented by legal representation that agree on whatever the, the disclosure and the agreement is. It's to protect each other from the agreement. As far as this agreement looks like, it looks like she was never protected. Right. And that Vince was the only one protected because he put the fear of God in her and says, you sign this or that's that or I'll ruin you. And I think there's some threats in that lawsuit. It's good reading. You need to check it out. Read the lawsuit. You, all you have to do is type it in. You can download it on a PDF and you can have it forever and, and study it because it's public yeah. record. And, I'm by the way, any of the, uh, I don't the mean to hijack are gonna come out. I don't mean to keep hijacking this. But nobody knew about this until I think it was. I think I told Phil the uh, small TV station out of Rhode Island. Yeah, put it out there. Can you imagine yeah. that? A small TV station got a hold of this because the filing was in Connecticut. Somebody who worked for the TV station found out that this lawsuit was filed and then blew up from there. So can you imagine? This thing might have not even been out there if this small little TV station in Rhode Island didn't pick it up. Yeah, amazing. You know what? I, yeah. I, I Local want- news. I would like to know you guys' opinion on what is the reason that she wanted to get out of the NDA? For what? How would that benefit her? Um, based on, well, it doesn't really say in the civil lawsuit. From what, from what I understand, she just wanted out of it because she was she she's been in counseling since all this happened, and I think it's part of her healing process. And I, I honestly, I think she got legal advice and saw that this is probably not a valid NDA. That's what I understand. Well, I, I think part the biggest part of the problem from her perspective, from what I can tell, is that um, Vince was the one who, who you know, b- breached the NDA by sh- you know, sh- revealing details that she had said, you know, she signed and swore that she wouldn't disclose. But right. he felt free to share them with everybody else. Yeah. yeah, like within company or outside that. of company, though, you know, that's it makes right. me wonder, does this apply right. to, you know, information within the co- the company yeah, or, or you know, outside of the company? You know, yeah. what does this NDA cover? You know, but he and also that, stopped paying her. Right. Yeah, I think, I think he found out based on the timeline, Vince found out that she lawyered up and that's when the payment stopped. Right. Right. So, I mean, so which, I, which I, coincides. I just, I have to ask myself, you know, sure. what for what reason is she trying to get out of the NDA? What how is that going to benefit her? Well, that's that's a book. Sweet. Yeah, a book. <laughs> a uh, book bringing let's down uh let's, let's bringing down this exactly. this 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 uh combat sports juggernaut, you know. Let's, let's, the feds for a long time wanted the feds had the UFC and WWE in their crosshairs yeah. for years. I remember the late John McCain saying that UFC was human cockfighting and yeah. wanted to well, do away to with it. it. I and their athletes Martin. right now are so yeah. outspoken. They don't yeah. adhere to any script. Dana, Dana White in, included. Yeah. Uh, they're outspoken. They're certainly what people would call base. And they yeah. speak their mind whether you agree or not. And uh, I think that ruffles a lot of feathers, too. You know, yeah. they're influencers in many, many regards. Sure. I mean, right. they appeal to such a segment of, of, of the male population in a given age group. And... Uh, I think they wield a lot of influential power, and I think that certain powers would maybe want to see them uh, tempered a little bit. Well, Brittany, to get back to get back to your question, Brittany, this comment probably sums up why she wants wanted out of the NDA. She wants to blow the doors off WWE and how they operate. You know, she wants to the doors of secrecy that have been blown off their hinges, and she wants to fill the air with fresh, you know, air fresh air fill the headquarters. I would imagine that obviously this is part of the reason. Do I know personally why she wanted out? I have no clue. Um, I, I don't think it's money at this stage of the game because I don't think she pissed through a million dollars of Vince's money already. And she was pretty much working with that company up for a thing until like two years ago. So she, you know, and, they, and I want to say she finished up at a little under 200 grand a year she was making with them. So, you know, that, that'll be again a book. A television appearance well, as to exactly. why she wanted to come out. A movie, maybe. A movie. You know? Who knows? I mean, right. I think she, she's a book is going to be a huge deal. Paid yeah. multiple television interviews, appearances, 2020, this, that, yeah. all the others. And 
I just have to say, I mean, is it like an AA thing where you have to confront the people that you hurt or in reverse, she wants to confront the people that hurt her as part of her trauma healing? Is it that or is it I know what I can get by blowing the doors off of this? Could be a little bit of both if you want. Or, you know, maybe... Maybe she stops the next woman from having to go through this. I mean, by that would be by, nice if that is yeah, the that, reason. The, I would like to think she that she took the high road and that's why she's doing it. But who knows though? You know, you know, I, and, you know, and, funny, you know we, we you know in America we used to protect our heroes. Like nobody knew that FDR had a mistress, and and in the sixties, I guess some people knew that you know JFK was sleeping with everybody, but the newspapers didn't do anything <laughs> to expose it. They did, you know, they right. try to protect him where now, I mean, social media, I mean, I remember, I mean, Mickey Mantle was one of my heroes besides Bruno. No, not and a Mickey Mantle reference again. Oh, well, but no, I mean, it, it's relevant though. I was horrified to learn that Mickey Mantle was not a good person. Mickey Mantle was a raging alcoholic. Yeah. He was very nasty to his fans. He had a wife and four kids at home that he cheated on like 8 million times. And, um, you know, mm-hmm. so I think we're at the point now. We it's almost like we 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 treasure building up heroes so we can knock them down. And I think a lot of people are going to be a lot of people looked up to Vince McMahon. I can tell just by reading the some of the comments in the chat room oh, that yeah. a lot of these people yeah. I, I don't want to say maybe idolized him, but certainly looked up to him. And it's yeah, it's man. a very hard realization. Yeah, when your hero is not what you thought they were. Almost right, seems right. like the family member. These people who are on this little box that we watch and, yeah. you know, weekly, nightly, or whatever for decades on end, they almost become family what? in a way. You Why know, you, there's they, we're trauma. As, as um, one of our chatters said, uh, Yard899 said that uh, Vince kind of trauma bonded us with the WWE product in some ways. And, you know, <laughs> we grew I think up there with might them. be a little truth we to did. that. I mean, yeah. I yeah. mean, Saturday morning, I mean, I the, the guy was in my house every Saturday morning interviewing all, you know, all these wrestlers. And why, why know, do you why do you think they call it television life. programming? They're programming. Oh, absolutely, mind. Joe. Absolutely. You, you know, know that. I mean? Yeah, I, I, I think I think, to, you know, it's a generational thing. If you had social media back in the day when Ted Williams was around or Mickey Mantle was around, these guys would not be the heroes they would be. Right. Uh, that's just how it is. Uh, no, everybody, it's, it's ways of you turned, that you turned a blind yeah. eye to that stuff years ago. Oh, he's a drunk or he's a batterer or he does this. Let's not talk about that. There's too much. No, on the he, line no, there. he hit 50 home runs last year. So now, now, now you count. flip it around and you know, you can't even get a job now without being subjected to questions that are just, just beyond me. Um, that you'd have to answer now because they, and, and even now, um, they look at your social media history. You know, they look at that stuff. So, yeah. you know, this, it's it's a it's a tough thing. And, I, you know, with, with all this stuff coming out, I, I just want to reiterate that, you know, Vince has not been convicted of anything yet. And I say yet strongly because if any normal person reads this lawsuit and mm-hmm. can't fathom why he is not in handcuffs yet or at least been arrested, um, I, I'm a, I have a feeling it'll come to that later on. Um, just based on what I've seen in a civil lawsuit and they're investigating him now. And if there's any, any road that leads them down that Avenue, you know, the feds are going to take that road. Um, because you know, that's, that's what it's all about now. Headlines, 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 views, and all that stuff. And that's what they're looking for. That's well, what where, you know, the expression where there's smoke, there's fire. There's, there's a shit ton of smoke. Unless you're CNN and there's a huge fire in the background saying everything's fine here, folks. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> now, let me ask you guys a question. Now, this is more wrestling related. Do you think that The Rock, you know, his his now you know eminent appearance at WrestleMania, do you think that's kind of a diversion by the WWE to take our minds off all this bullshit with Vince? Yes. Mm. Or is it possible? Asking, I mean, if you asked me that literally two hours ago, I'd say yes, but. F- Finding out now that The Rock versus Reigns was set in stone on January third, well okay. before all this, unless they knew this was coming down the pike because we're, we were three. I was going to say, you know, that's unless not that long knew, ago. Unless they knew, uh, but The Rock did come out this past weekend and say that the, the reason he showed up on SmackDown and did what he did and all that stuff, even though it was all planned out and everything, 
is to get everybody's mind because that's what the WWE does. They want you to forget about life for a while, even though it's the WWE's life that was people were trying to forget about on the corporate side, wanted that. And I, like I said, we only get what they want to give us. You don't right. think they know what's going on? Of course they do. There'll probably be another news dump. They're classic for this on Thursdays and Fridays. Could give everybody the weekend to digest it. Um, we used to call that the old Friday night news dump, right? Phil? Absolutely. I'm yeah. Friday at six. Friday at six. Yeah, no one will see it, baby. No yeah. one will, or they'll digest it slowly. It right, won't be right, that right. shock value. Yeah, so no water think, cooler talk. Yeah. yeah, I think, like I said before, it's going to get worse before it gets better. But if they're telling us that this was set in stone January third, the Rock first reigns, and I go with it, then fine. You know, it, it's business. But a lot has transpired since then. <laughs> Um, to to make you scratch your head, you know, that old song, things that make you go, hmm. And, that, and that another right old there. song, Joe, and that's a great, that's a great uh, quote too. And uh, I'm just by happenstance wearing tie-dye tonight. So I think of a an old tie-dye. Grateful Dead song. Of course, they're all old songs at this point, but uh, the victim or the crime, Jerry sings, Jerry uh, sings, am I the victim or the crime? You know, yeah, no there's kidding. a little bit of, uh, you know, not everyone is 100% good or bad. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, we have to ask these questions continuously. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I mean, I do not feel bad for Vince McMahon, not one bit, but I no. do feel bad for all the people that did look up to him. And yeah. now, well, I mean, some of them have to be horribly disappointed. Some of them are going to defend him to the very end, even yeah. after he's, uh, you know, either if he is indicted or if he is convicted, but and those just, those supporters just, have come out. There's supporters for Vince McMahon that have come out. There have been wrestlers and people that worked him and said they've never saw that side of it, which could be the case. Uh, we don't know what this guy was dealing with. If it's a mental health issue or something like that, whether he's schizophrenic, I don't know. Um, we don't know. I don't know him personally to know that. Um, what I can tell you that I mean, I look at these videos even from this past January. We went to a UFC event with with the Undertaker in Vegas. Yeah. And it's like, he had to have known something was coming down the pike because he's been under investigation and to have the Undertaker still, you know, walk with him and be with him and all that stuff. People like that want to, you know, as much respect they want to give your old boss and all that stuff. You still want to keep your image squeaky clean, so to speak, and not go down that Avenue. And right now, anybody who's associated with Vince McMahon is technically guilty in a sense. (laughs) I feel bad for Shane, Stephanie and triple H. You know Triple H knows the whole deal. You yeah. tell him it's his son-in-law. He's been with the company for 30-something years. He's seen you it. You know who I feel bad for? I feel bad for Vince's grandkids when somebody says to one of these eight-year-old girls, did your grandfather really shit on a woman's head? I what do they say? I, you gotta, they, they have, uh, the same thing I feel for Brock Lesnar. You know, these, these kids are in college, too, so they're probably getting the social media backlash worse than the eight-year-old grand, grandkids, you know? This is a tough situation for any family member. Never mind. Well, that's, that's another victim. You're talking like his kids and his grandkids. They're yeah. gonna. I mean, they gotta live with this now. Yep. How where's, hard? Linda, where's Linda and all this? That yeah, was, yeah. I, I thought of that earlier. Like I haven't heard a word from her. An, an, another disturbing thing in the um, lawsuit states that the reason Vince had Janelle sign that non-disclosure agreement is because Linda found out about their relationship. Yeah. Yep. Like, okay, their relationship. What about? The, the the whole relationship, like John Laurinaitis, the threesomes, all that stuff. To, to, how much does she know? Because this was not no casual I mean, affair. Let's let's talk about that. The guy's living by himself. What is, what does she think he's doing? Watching Netflix? I mean, come on. They're still technically come married. On. I know. There's pictures of him on dates with women too. Right. Uh, yeah. It's his age. Uh, you know yeah. whether or not that's a show thing. I don't know. Um, but they're still technically married, so I don't know. Yeah. The, the repercussions on this is going to be huge. It's going to be yeah. huge. Yeah. This is like you, you know, like when you when you build a train set and you purposely program it so that the two trains are going to collide. <laughs> and I mean, it, it's going to happen. We're just, it's just happening right now in very slow motion. Yeah, but it, I mean, there's going to be so much more to this, I think. But it's going to come fast and furious. They're going to give us. You know, they're not going to give us a little pieces like they did. They're going to give us boom, boom, boom. Let us dissect that. Like I said, this is the worst possible time. If you're just a casual fan and you do not know this is WrestleMania season, this is their biggest money maker of the year. Their biggest this this sets up the the company's uh, financial portfolio for the next 365 days. WrestleMania. This is a huge. It's thing. their Super Bowl. Yeah, your Super Bowl. Yeah. It's right. Endeavor's first time being involved with something like this so they're right. going to get a taste of the financial windfall and all this stuff as well 
to have this hovering over your head mm -hmm. um right now it's obviously full damage control they're probably going to try and at least until the night after wrestlemania or the night after the raw or after wrestlemania they'll try and kibosh a lot of the information that's going to be put out in the media i say that hypothetically but judging by the week we had two weeks ago when it was all WWE, good news, good news, good news. And then boom, the bombshell, the, the implosion hit was like, oh, my God, this just like took everything away from all that. If they do that again before WrestleMania, it's, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. And for the record, Joe, it can't be full damage control, of course, because now Bailey has been uh, removed from it. <laughs> right. The big question <laughs> remains, where's Dakota Kai going to fall? I know. <laughs> So, I mean, does does this possibly ha uh, have any repercussions with their uh, deal with Netflix? I, I wouldn't be surprised. That. Well, yeah. I mean, th what did they say? It, they had a Netflix day last week, and they said Vince is gone. That's all we care about or something like that. I saw it in the chat as well. Um, some of the stuff they have on Netflix, who are they to say? Yeah. My God, right. some of the garbage. Well, right. some of the what scares me about the Netflix deal is they've never streamed live sports ever. I think they're going to start oh, no. doing that this month. They're going to actually film a tennis match, a live tennis match. And quote unquote, the CEO of Netflix says, yeah, we got a year to get this, this straight. You're going to allow a 30-something year mainstay Monday night product, your bread and butter mm -hmm. that puts you on the map. Go to a streaming service, which is fine if it's Netflix, but you, wouldn't you have something more solid? They have a year to figure it out. Yeah. Like, okay, that's great that they paid. Oh, you know, I figured out what is it, a five billion, five billion. Dollars over oh, ten yeah. years. I mean, that's that's no chump change. But yeah, you better have it figured out if you're going to be streaming a live wrestling show exactly. every Monday night for three hours, which I really wish they'd stop doing three oh. hours. That's besides the point. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let the swears go and the blood fly and all that stuff. I just think that they probably could have done a little bit better, whether it was on the NBC Universal side of things and stuff like that. I just don't. And don't forget, folks, we talked about this in the past. Netflix's deal doesn't kick in until January of 2025. USA Network deal with Raw ends October 31st. So from yep. October 31st to January 1st, you have two and a half months we're right now, as of 746 on July 5th, 2024, Raw has no landing spot to be shown. Right. So, but hey, they got a year to figure it out. Whatever. Okay. Cartoon Network would be my, my, my <laughs> prediction. <laughs> yep, I hear you. So. so what does everybody say? Indicted, convicted? I say, I'm going to say not indicted. Um, but I, I, I do think, and, and settled out of court. In regards to the civil lawsuit? Well, I'm saying federal, no indictment. Civil, I think it's going to be settled out of court, no trial. If there's no indictment federal-wise out of this, after what I've seen in the in the lawsuit, then I'd say just like in wrestling, the fix is in. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Um, because if you read this lawsuit, even just some of the stuff that's mentioned in there and they investigate it and they find out even a third of that is truth, yeah, um, that's grounds for immediate you know, warrants, subpoenas, indictments, you name it. I think yeah. civil the civil case will settle out of court. I, I think, agree. And I think that's going to be the, the low end of it. The high end is going to be, yep, there is an indictment. Who's going to be named in that indictment remains to be seen because it's just not going to be Vince McMahon. It just can't be him. He didn't act alone. He had people there. People knew of the situation, whether if not they, they acted with this girl uh, we're involved physically with this girl. If you even knew about it and, and you did know about it, you're just as guilty. Yep. You're just as guilty. I think Massachusetts natives remember, uh, was it uh, Big Dan's, the case? Joe yep. Foster and the accused. Oh, is that like Fall River or down that way? I the pool it table? Was, it was out there. Yeah, she got raped by a couple of guys. On the pool and the table. One, and the one yep. guy they got to squeal, they arrested him for knowing that it happened and he witnessed it. Yep. And that's how they got him. So this is a, a, a perfect scenario in the corporate world. If they knew about it and they find out that somebody knew about it in the corporate world or talent world, wherever in WWE, it's a domino effect. It's going to be more than just Vince McMahon indictment. It's going to be a whole well, thing. I like you Seinfeld, know, the last episode. Yeah. <laughs> they were all, they were yeah, all arrested. They're going, to, they're going to indict enough of these people that you know that some of them are going to fold yeah. and, and turn. Definitely. You know, yeah. for, they're going to cut deals with the with the Fed. They have and, to, you know, in return to their for their and testimony. That, and that, and that's you know how it goes. Happen. 
And that's how it so, goes. I mean, now, at that point, then it, it's not good at all. You know, what's the storybook ending here? I don't know. Vince McMahon disappears. I don't know. You, yeah. you, he's got those means. This is another thing, too. This guy's a billionaire. He could flee the country. Mr. Mojo yeah. Rising. He can he fake his own death. He flee the country yeah. right now. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think they seized his passport. They would be where, smart, too. But he's been in Saudi Arabia since the indictment. So, I mean, since the law, excuse me, since the uh, investigation. So, they, you know, with the indictment will come, you know, seizing of the passport and all that stuff. We've seen this a million times. Yeah. It's the Harvey Weinstein effect. It's the, you know, he might be the face of it, but there's going to be other players involved here and uh, they're going to be just as found guilty as Vince. Yeah. I, I think the two big ones are going to be Vince and John Laurinaitis. And oh, then yeah. I think it's just going to go down from there. And, yep. you know, like Joe said, it's going to be a domino effect. And if they even knew about it, they're yep. going to be in trouble as well. Think about Triple H. Yep. Ah. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, no, are we gonna are we gonna see the ties to MC Island next? Like, oh god, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, this is a crazy world we live in now, and you know, the stars of the universe and baby cakes will tell you that there's some strange stuff happening in the universe right now. Absolutely. Uh, so she was not shocked that this came down the pike, um, but I can I can tell you right now, it's we're in a crazy time thing right now where. All will be revealed and yeah. whether or not our childhood hero goes to jail or, you know, the guy that beamed in our living rooms every Saturday morning alongside Pat Patterson, Bruno San Martino ends up behind bars. Yeah. We're left sitting there going, what the hell just happened? You're right. This if is the that world. were in place instead of Johnny Ace, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe this wouldn't have happened quite like it did. Yeah. I, and another thing about the Johnny Ace thing, when I first read the lawsuit when it dropped, I'm like, why hasn't anybody commented yet? Vince denied it right off the bat. The lawyers denied it right off the bat. Vince resigned right off the bat. Took Johnny Ace like a week to respond. Yeah. Like, what are you waiting? That's not damage control. That's like, and then to respond the way he did, basically oh. burying Vince, admitting it had happened, and then and pretty much outing yourself that you participated in a sexual assault. What do you, like, that's not very wise. Desperate um, man. Wise not a good defense if you ask me, but, you yeah. know. Right now, he, we, he hasn't said anything since, so maybe they put the muzzle on him. I don't know. Yeah, and did you see the um, statement that the bell is sent? Everybody's criticizing that as well. Of course they are. What? I, what? What? Refresh my memory, Brittany. What, uh, what did oh, they say? It was so vague. They just said basically they, um, you know, they feel really bad about um, anything that's happened and. They, they they didn't name anybody and no, they didn't say right. anything about their stepfather. They didn't say Vince. They didn't use any names. They just, yeah. you know, oh, you know, we empower women and, and, and they're, they are shocked. They are shocked and disheartened with the recent allegations against members of the WWE. They didn't even say Vince. Right. This is something we don't stand or condone from anyone, no matter who they are. We want women to feel safe in the workplace and all that. They just put out a very vague statement. They didn't name I'll names, say. but the casual fan doesn't realize that they're, I don't want what I can't call him a father. Can they call him the father in law by marriage? Yeah, right. Father-in-law. Father -in -law. Yeah, their mother is married to, to Johnny Ace. So it's yeah, like right. they didn't name him. He, it's almost like they put they put their they put, you know, we, I've seen the rumors around there too. Like, how did the Bella twins advance so quick with yeah. with they weren't that talented folks? And I don't mean to shoot them down. I know wrestling no, is a tough right. industry and all that stuff, but to 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 grow and get to where they are that quick. Another question mark is now raised. Were they involved? Did they have something to do with it? You know, things like that. This is the this is the domino effect we just talk about. You know, it's 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 not who you know what you know. It's what about the people that do know? You know what I mean? Like, what did they know? They're there. Their father-in-law is married to the, their mother. They had to have had a conversation. Just like Triple H is in a tough situation right now. Yeah. And the day the, the what the Royal Rumble, he had the presser right after that. The first question they asked him was like you know, it's been a tough week and he goes, I choose to focus on the positive, which sounds like somebody who is shell shocked, just like us to hear what would happen, whether he knows everything remains to be seen, but I don't care. They were, they were together an awful lot. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, if it ever came out to something like he knew what was going on, didn't say nothing, he could be held liable as well. So sure. it's a, it's a tough situation for everybody, family members, yeah. kids. Um, even if you just came in contact with Vincent one, one time back in that day and he, and he, you know, had a 
a bar drink with somebody and exposed himself or something like that. It's it's tough. It's a tough situation. And like I said again, I'll say it again. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. Will well, it will it become up. or is it already the biggest scandal in the history of professional wrestling? I think it's going to supersede that. No I doubt. Think about it, it. I think oh, it will yeah. easily become. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I think it is. Yep. I don't. I hate to say. I think I saw that somewhere either in the chat as well. Vince is going to go out with a bang, and it's ah. like. Hey, no pun did intended, that, right? Dude. No pun intended. <laughs> but uh, it's just up shit's creek, so to speak. Yeah, that's ah! like, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't. I, you know, I, I like to make light of serious things good. because that's how we that's how we move along in this. But I really got to ask, what did he name those dildos? I know. I mean, I mean the black dildo, the white dildo. Like uh, they they were named after WWE superstars. I can't. I, I, that's the one thing I'm going to look for when I see. And there was a settlement. there was a dildo with no chin, and he named it James Ellsworth. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Every dildo with no chin has a fighting chance. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, Very Jesus. good, Benny. Oh my god! But I mean, just, oh just, my just, god. just some of the sick stuff that's out there. Um, that's in that lawsuit. If you take a look at it, just real. I mean, they they with you know Johnny Most, who we all know was a sports broadcaster for the Celtics. He was my broadcasting teacher growing up. And he told me when I was in school, he goes, I go, what's the best thing you could do for when you interview someone? And they say, go for the jugular, ask that yep. difficult question, all that stuff. So I said, okay. So I, and I take that. I think what Janelle Grant and her lawyers did right now is they went for the jugular. There, there's no turning back for Vince from this, even yeah. if in a hypothetical world, he's vindicated all the way through. This stuff is still public record. This yeah. stuff is still out there. His, his reputation is now ruined. His, you know, everything that he's done for the WWE and the universe is now tainted. Yeah. But everything remains to be seen, you know, just another day in the life, I guess. Is he going to be I mean, walked we're, we're, down we're the uh, green to... mile by the big boss man and be put in a cell with nails now and orange jumpsuits? I mean, oh, how's it going to play out, you know? Oh, That's crazy. Maybe I another would love that. Flair going in the ring at 74 years old, you know, drunk and kind of tarnishing his legacy. This is like destroying your, your yeah. legacy. Yeah. yeah. I love Yard Ape 99 says Rick Flair once said, if he dies, if he dies, you find my phone, throw it in the trash. Yeah, Yard Ape's got some quality quotes here. He had another he one. Does. Let me see if I can find it here. Oh, Joe Myers, white was Brock, black was for Lashley. We know what that means. <laughs> oh, my God. These are some really, oh, man. My God. I wonder if there's a big black one that's Mark Henry. Oh, Jesus. That's shaped like a hand. <laughs> <laughs> They'd call that one SD or something, Special Delivery Jones. There you go. <laughs> the May Young Special. The oh, May Young went to the Special. Once too many times, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh god unbelievable what do you say guys <laughs> gives new meaning to intestinal fortitude oh there you go. he's here all week folks <laughs> try the veal <laughs> oh boy but yeah we'll see what happens i mean tomorrow's a new day you know for all we know like i said there'll be another news dump thursday or friday but thursday is the uh here's an interesting thursday is the wrestlemania press conference thursday night seven o'clock eastern time on peacock don't be surprised if something else comes out around that time because it just seems like whenever there's something good happening at WWE lately, oh wow, side's going to happen. So you never we'll know. be on air then too, won't we? Oh, probably yeah. And yep. Yard Ape does win the quote of the night, which is if Johnny Cochran were around, it yeah. would be if the shit don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> He's had some really? good ones tonight. He's the trauma that, bond that with, the, yeah. with Vince and WWE for sure. Bill Clinton would say, I always like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Davis says he's got, Vince has a poop fetish. Yeah, I'll say. That's going to be like a sick fetish. I just can't even see the, the I don't know what that word is I'm looking for. Like, I... I I just can't picture that. I don't think I could even do that in front of somebody. No. I mean, I don't care how messed up I was. I just. I'm, I, I, if I'm home by myself and I go to the bathroom, I still lock the door. <laughs> I'm serious. It would take more. I, I couldn't even be shit faced and do that. So I'm just. <laughs> no, saying, me That's I, disgusting. Oh, my God. It's just horrible. Brit there are some people that I know in wrestling, actually. Yeah. We had heard back in the late 80s, we heard. Um, two of the guys at Kowalski's yeah. were into that kind of thing. 
and defecating on each yeah. other. Yes. Yeah. Isn't there a word for that? Like some kind of fetish? There is. I yeah. Fecal. Fecal fetish, perhaps. <laughs> Phil, you came up with that way too fast, man. Way no too kidding. fast. No, it's like, go to the bathroom. Clean, I don't know. Femur, no. <laughs> femur is? But, you know, we heard it in... in a fecal you know, facial. Oh, my. <laughs> originally, ev the girls, I can say, thought that it was a joke. You know, we all thought it was a joke. And then a couple of the guys came to us and told us at the school, told us that, you know, we're not kidding. This is what he, he really does. And there was two of them. And, and there was one that said he liked the girl to get on top of a glass table, oh, take geez. a shit, and he'd be underneath the glass table and watch. That was and the I rumor about Stallone. <laughs> that sounds like a goddamn science experiment. <laughs> but like, what? How? How is that anything? Why would like anybody enjoy? It? I don't know. To each his own, right? Oh, I mean, God. if we all, if we all had the same taste, they, 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 there would be like a Volkswagen dealer that sold white Volkswagens to everyone because we yeah, all had next week on the fecal facial files. Phil, Jeez. Dr. Phil will fill us in. <laughs> oh my, I'm not that versed. <laughs> Thank God, my God. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, it's nine o'clock, guys. I think we need to let these nice people get back to their uh, Monday Night Raw. What do you say? I say I that's it. great. Thank you, everybody yeah. in the chat for tuning in. That's oh, my God. Chat. So much. Yeah, thank you, everyone. More to come, I'm sure. Really? My goodness. Oh, yeah. Way more. I think we need to do this again, but. We have to follow so, up to the follow up to the follow up. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, so on um, behalf Br of. Brittany, Brittany, before we go, what website do you see that uh, poop it on the table thing? Oh, uh, oh no, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> No, no, no. Brit rhymes with Joe shit. Pen in her pan. Like the... Yeah, great. <laughs> Don't encourage him, Brittany. Christ, I didn't nope. even do that in high school. What the hell? I know, right? Wow. Okay. All right, I'm going to try it again. On behalf of what a day, Joe, <laughs> El Presidente, Phil de Cesare, the bad girl, Brittany Brown, and the Did player. You know? <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> watching and see you next crime. <laughs> you guys later. Good night. Thank oh you. <laughs> dirty, dirty. <laughs>